This is Caring for Kids on News Talk 760 WJR. Presented by the Children's Foundation. And here's your host, President and CEO of the Children's Foundation, Larry Burns. Thanks, Mark. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our October 2021 edition of Caring for Kids. This episode was recorded up on Mackinac Island at the Mackinac Policy Conference just a few weeks ago and features a great lineup of leaders. Joining us will be Praveen Fadani, President of Priority Health, Robert Colt, President and CEO of Colt Communications, and Chair of the Michigan Community Services Commission, and Diane Banks, Director of Advancing Macomb. It's all coming up next right here on Caring for Kids on the great voice of the Great Lakes, News Talk 760 WJR. It's Caring for Kids with Larry Burns. Welcome back, everybody. Larry Burns here, Caring for Kids. We're on the island, that's Mackinac Island, that is. And joining me now is Praveen Fidani. Praveen is the president of Priority Health, a $5 billion health plan that is nationally recognized for improving the health and lives of the people it serves. Praveen has more than 25 years of industry experience and extensive background includes roles managing consumer commercial and government health plan products. Prior to joining Priority Health, Praveen held a variety of senior leadership positions with a national health plan, including both Humana and United Health. Praveen, welcome to Caring for Kids. Thank you so much, Larry. It is such a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. And I've been looking forward to meeting you in person, and uh, uh, so it's great. We have a wonderful relationship with Priority Health, and uh, it's great to have this opportunity to to talk to you. And so, first of all, congratulations on your new role. Thank you. It's wonderful. And tell our listeners about your background and what really excites you about this new opportunity. Thank you, Larry. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited uh, about the opportunity to be part of the program. I've been involved, Larry, in healthcare and uh, the care and coverage industry for more than 25 years, as you already introduced me, and had the privilege of being a part of many transformational changes. And when I think about the word transformation, that's exactly the reason that I came to Priority Health. I think we have such an amazing opportunity in the state of Michigan for Priority Health to do some very transformational things. Uh, And that's really, I think, what brought me here uh, to Priority Health. Uh, It's a company I've had my eye on for a very long time because of the reputation for innovation. Uh, Our teams are doing some fascinating work around transparency, personalization, digitization, but most importantly on bringing value to our communities. Uh, In many cases, we're deploying some of the latest technology, including predictive analytics as an example. And I've always, uh, as you also introduced, had had an interest in consumerism, true consumerism. I think healthcare is so far removed from consumerism. Um, it's, It's always fascinating to me that people enroll in their health plans, but then they take it for granted and they don't really engage in their health and well-being quite as much as I think healthcare really requires them to do. So this notion of getting our consumers actively engaged in healthcare and helping us, partnering with us to make them healthier is I think what really excites me about Priority Health. Another thing that was attractive to me was the company's values uh, and commitment to the community. I love the fact that healthcare uh, uh, and priority health is local. Healthcare absolutely should be local. So my background in the past has also included work in public health, and I'm really passionate about finding solutions that have a real impact on communities, and ultimately measuring our success on the health and well-being of the community. So I saw the opportunity to join a phenomenal company that shared my vision of a more affordable, simpler, unified, and personalized healthcare ecosystem that ultimately makes an impact on the communities we serve, and that's the reason I'm here. Yeah, those are those are great reasons. And we're talking with uh, Priority, Priority Health President Praveen Thadani, and what you were just explaining is certainly music to my ears. The, the Children's Foundation is really dedicated to the social determinants of health, uh, and what you're talking about really has to do with my opinion absolutely with everybody's total health 
holistically, and so uh, I commend you for that. And uh, the future is bright as, as with your leadership. And so Priority Health is a, is a fast-growing health organization now with a true presence in Detroit with Total Health. Correct. And what do you see in the foreseeable future, um, either more growth or other elements that uh, you'd want our listeners to know? Hey, Larry, so I want to also take this opportunity to thank you for your partnership with us. We, we appreciate it tremendously. Oh, it's our as pleasure. you articulated, uh, the social determinants and, and some of those pieces that think about the whole person really are very meaningful. It's a very exciting time to be at Priority Health. We continue to experience remarkable growth. In fact, as you said, we're the fastest growing health plan in the state. And I really think our members are drawn to some of the same things that attracted me to come to, uh, to Priority Health. Um, you heard me say some of this, a dedication to innovation, focus on member experience, commitment to affordability, value, transparency. And I think consumers really appreciate our drive towards simpler, more affordable, more personalized approaches to healthcare as well. I'm excited about where we are today, but even more excited about the future. And uh, one of the biggest areas that excites me tremendously is what we call our movement towards value-based care. And I know that's uh, that may be a foreign term to some of our listeners. Let me just uh, spend a couple of minutes articulating sure, what that do. is. So in our healthcare ecosystem today, there's a payer or a financer of healthcare, and there's a deliverer or the, the ecosystem that delivers the healthcare. And historically, for good or bad or indifferent, uh, those two parties have not been fully aligned. Uh, and so what value-based care really is aligning the mutual interests of, of both of those uh, the, the parties, the, the care deliverer and the financer of healthcare, to ensure that the focus is the health and well-being of the community and our members. So when there's alignment, uh, um, not only just philosophical alignment, but also financial alignment, uh, even the metrics that matter uh, are aligned between the two, the, the two entities, it puts the consumer at the center of everything that we do. Right. And when you put the consumer at the center, when both parties are doing exactly the same thing and are focused on making the, the member as healthy as possible, it pays off. Uh, rich dividends in the form of a healthier community and making healthcare more affordable as well. So that's really what uh, excites me tremendously about uh, about where our future is going to take us. Priority Health was the first insurer in in, in Michigan to deliver value-based care models beginning in 1997, and today we do that across all of our markets, meaning our commercial employer-based uh, membership, our Medicare, our Medicaid, and our individual exchange membership as well. So this is a key component in allowing us to adopt more innovative care models. And what I mean by care models is a model that puts a member first. Yeah, so no, whether I you're, totally get that. Yeah, whether you're a member with congestive heart failure or COPD, we want to put your needs first, prevent exacerbation of disease, and really make sure we focus on making you healthier. That's, that's what Priority Health is Absolutely. all about. Absolutely. That, that certainly is music to my ears. And my good friend in Toledo, I spent a number of years in Toledo, Randy Ostra, uh, is leading the way for ProMedica in a similar fashion. And, yep. and so it, it really excites me as the person in, in my position. So the Children's Foundation for the last many, many months uh, have been working with um, Shannon Wilson and the Total Health Care Foundation, which is a wonderful, relatively new uh, foundation that um, is owned by Priority Health. Correct. Uh, and it is all about the social determinants of health. And can you tell our listeners a little bit about the philanthropic initiatives that that um, foundation is trying to achieve? Great question, Larry. As, as you articulated, uh, the Total Healthcare Foundation really is fairly new, and it was created as part of the merger agreement between Priority Health and Total Healthcare. And the intent was to distribute grants to organizations, primarily in Southeast Michigan, that are committed, as you said, to social determinants of health and improving the health and well-being of the individuals that they serve. So the foundation was created to honor the legacy of THC, or Total Health Care, which has been the longest-serving HMO in the Southeast Michigan. We're really grateful for the partnership of your organization, the Children's Foundation, to help us identify areas of need and work with organizations to ensure the funds are having the greatest impact in the marketplace. The operational support from the Children's Foundation team also allows the foundation, our foundation, to operate more effectively and efficiently to invest more in the community, which is ultimately what it's all about, is maximize the dollars going to the community. It's been an amazing year so far, Larry. We've already issued more than $2 million in grants, mm -hmm. and we're accepting applications for, for additional grant rounds later this year. In fact, Shannon was right outside, and she said we've got 16 applications, okay, which is good. a very, very good, good number. 
Uh, we've had the opportunity to support so many amazing organizations that are having a direct impact on communities across Southeast. Let me name just a few. Yeah, please do. Uh, Alternatives for Girls, which mm -hmm. helps homeless and high-risk girls and young women avoid violence and teen pregnancy and exploitation. Uh, another one is Brilliant Detroit, which operates as a neighborhood hub. Right. One of our big partners. Uh, they serve, they do amazing work serving families with young children to improve the economic status of the family. Catch, which is dedicated to improving nice. the quality of life for pediatric patients, yeah. as you know, and their Great families. Great partner of ours as well. Absolutely. CAS Community Social Services, uh, and this is going to be used to build two tiny homes as part of CCSS Tiny Homes Initiatives for low-income Detroit residents. And Hope Clinic, uh, which uh, certainly provides health care services for those without insurance. So again, this incredible dedication to ensuring that we're focused on the social determinants, but also uh, uh, equity in the community as well. And yeah. without your support, we would not have been able to do many of these pieces. So it's been an incredible experience for our team to get to know these organizations, and we continue to be very excited about our yeah. partnership. In many, in in, thank you. In many ways, we're just getting started uh, with with our partnership, and we I look forward to a long partnership. And the whole concept was the Children's Foundation has 130 partners across the state to take advantage of our ability to do a deep dive into organizations, make recommendations to Shannon and the board at Total Health Care Foundation. And then maybe even more importantly, what I like to say is have one plus one equals three. Of course. So if both foundations are supporting an organization, uh, they're able to do even more than uh, if we didn't work together. So uh, it really excites me and we'd love other organizations in the community to work with us on that as well. So one plus one might equal five. <laughs> we love the idea. <laughs> we're shooting for that every day. Right. So we're on Mackinac. Yep. Uh, things are hopping here. And so what have you found either most interesting or maybe the climate of this uh, COVID type uh, conference? Yeah, it's it's very interesting. We just started, uh, got started this morning. It's uh, it's it's dense and it's active, which is really right. nice. Things right. are very hopping, as you said. This is my first year at the conference, and I understand things are a bit different, of course, due to right. COVID. Uh, I can tell you a few things that I'm really excited uh, to experience. I am very much looking forward to meeting folks like yourselves, but also many other business leaders and certainly uh, uh, our, our legislative leaders across the state as well, uh, and networking with them. Uh, this is a a very tight state and a tight community, and uh, the relationships personally matter to me a lot, so very excited to be doing that. Um, also, Mackinac Island is just an incredible destination. I've been here previously with my family, and uh, uh, really looking forward to bringing them back here uh, to enjoy a bit of the island a bit more again, so uh, as things start opening back up, right. it's a phenomenal place to it be. It is. So it's very special. Great to be here. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, Praveen, and uh, Look forward to working with you and your colleagues uh, to help kids and families in Southeast Michigan, in Michigan and beyond. Thank you so much, so, Larry. Thank it you. It is my absolute pleasure. That was Praveen Thadani of Priority Health. Coming up next, we'll talk with Robert Colt about his work with the Michigan Community Services Commission. When caring for kids continues, here on the great voice of the Great Lakes, News Talk 760 WJR. Welcome back to Caring for Kids on WJR, presented by the Children's Foundation. Welcome back, everybody. Larry Burns here. I'm on the island. What island is that? That's Mackinac Island for the Chambers Policy Conference. And with me now is Robert Colt. Robert is the president and CEO of Colt Communications, Inc., a privately owned communications corporation with offices located in Okemos, Michigan. Along with his public relations, advertising, and communication consulting work, Robert serves as a full-time instructor in the Advertising and Public Relations Department in the College of Communication, Arts, and Sciences at Michigan State University. Go Spartans. <laughs> Go Green. Right. Robert is currently the volunteer chair of the Michigan Community Service Commission, a leadership position he has served since 2017. And prior to funding, excuse me, prior, prior to founding Colt Communications, Robert worked as a civil servant in the role of executive for the Office of Communication in the Michigan Department of Transportation, otherwise known as MDOT. So Robert, welcome to Caring for Kids. 
Welcome, Larry. Uh, thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh. I, I say welcome because I say that to everybody here in the island. I turn around and I know everybody. Exactly. Oh, my Isn't gosh. something, yeah. You just, you, you just have great conversations, and it's wonderful that you're here. You know, I do want to tell people that the Children's Foundation and the Michigan Community Service Commission have established a great partnership. We have. You want to talk about it now? Let's talk about it. Let's go. It's fabulous. So, So we have worked together in the past in different ways, but we kind of formalized a partnership in having the foundation hold the many funds that we gather. And uh, people donate to the Community Service Commission. It's a commission mm-hmm. fund. And they want to donate to the efforts that we really do at the commission and not necessarily give money to state government. And the Community Service Commission is the state's lead agency on volunteer service, on using service as a strategy to help and, and, and attack a lot of problems. You know, um, your next question is probably, what do you do? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we have, we are all the core um, organizations, AmeriCorps, Senior Corps. There are so many different things, VISTA and other programs that are funded uh, federally through the Michigan Community Service Commission. About 30 million dollars now for AmeriCorps, 1,000 members, and so many of those projects and programs involve kids. And whether it's Mentor Michigan or a literacy investment that we have, um, we, we have environmental programs where, we, where kids get together and donate service. We're really trying to create a culture and future for kids having an understanding of the value of volunteer service. So, you know, we, we're partners, we're working together, and we uh, partner with a lot of agencies. Even on strategy, one of the things that we do is deal with disaster relief. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there have been people in Detroit whose basements have flooded seven times this year. Right, something and, terrible. And volunteers want to help, so we organize the volunteer effort to go in and help. There are just so many different things that we're doing. Here on Mackinac, it's, what we want to do is celebrate those people who volunteer, especially during COVID. You know, the, the script changes a little bit um, because you can't do as many things in person. But boy, there are so many heroes out there. And if people go to uh, miheroesproject.org, they can nominate a hero. Let me tell you the okay, woman great. that I, I nominated. It, it just, she's terrific. An 81-year-old nurse okay. <laughs> who kept her license. All right, good and she, for her. She volunteers at the, uh, at the local school to give vaccinations. So three days a week, she's there giving you know, vaccinations to people in the community just so that they can protect their own kids because we're not there yet, obviously. Oh, so close with kids and vaccinations. Right, right. getting closer. we got to keep them safe. And so um, so Pat Munshaw has donated. She, she says, I have the time. I have the skills. Why wouldn't I right, do it? Exactly. We want to celebrate those stories. One of the stories, too, is that at, one of our volunteers has worked hard at Ford Field 275,000 vaccinations, all volunteer effort. Really? Yeah. It's just terrific stories. So are these heroes all over the state? All over the state. Every corner there are heroes who volunteer their time and service in Detroit, uh, in Grand Rapids, Lansing, Alpena. Some are doing environmental service. Some are doing, uh, and we're looking forward to uh, the uh, a president really moving forward on climate core. Right. That would be right. another core yeah. program we have. Well, so there are people all over the state, and if we tell their story, whatever they're doing, that's why we started uh, MichiganHeroesProject.org. If people go to that website, volunteer service is recognized and should be celebrated, and it's a great place for the media to get local stories. So all over the state of Michigan, people are contributing their, their service. And That's time. great. And so we, we, the Children's Foundation, now we're not all over the state, but we're, we have 130 partners 
and we're in Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, Lansing, Mount Pleasant, uh, and Monroe and, and other communities. So we, we share that statewide interest. Uh, and so our partnership between the Commission and the Children's Foundation makes perfect sense since you're doing great work and what we're trying to do is to support great work. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, it's a great combination of things and uh, we were I was introduced to the Commission through Doug Farrick my colleague and chief development officer of the Children's Foundation who serves with you on the Commission and uh, he's a great commissioner he's terrific he loves it we, we yeah, really he loves it and, and there is a guy he could be doing this interview and telling you how yeah. directly involved the Commission is in so many different activities. Uh, he's such a good spokesperson and representative for the commission. Yeah, he is, and he's such a positive person. So I mentioned earlier, we're on Mackinac Policy Conference. Uh, we missed a year, so we're back here. And what is, what are you finding, sort of the attitude of people in the, in the atmosphere, and, and what, what do you, uh, how do you think things are going? You know, leaders seem to be enormously optimistic and positive. Uh, I think to get the public to turn around a little bit is going to be a little tougher sell. I see so many people here I know and they're, they're visionary and they really look toward the future and are optimistic and hopeful. Um, I, I wish I could see that sometimes in my own city and neighborhood. Right, I, right. I think people here know that we're on the right path Look, it, it, there may be some more bumps along the way. We all know that. But look, I think we've worked things out and created some responsive strategies with COVID and other complications that have been very successful. So many of our AmeriCorps members have come in and have had a, an assignment literacy or, or community service. Urban Safety Corps is what mm -hmm. we do. And they've just had to flip. They flip the script. They find out the best way to work things out. And I think that's what leaders here at Mackinac are right. really working for. Well, there's a word that's really resonated during COVID, and that is pivot. <laughs> Many of us have had to pivot on what and how we uh, work every day. And so before I let you go, I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about cold communications. Oh, well, thank you. And um, I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. Well, so... Uh, more than 30 years ago, I uh, left state government. I worked in five years as the, uh, in the Treasury Department as the spokesperson for the state treasury. Uh, we had a $20 billion pension fund, all taxes. I worked in transportation for a couple of years, aviation, roads, mass transit, wonderful. I had a lot of friends, and when I decided to form my own company, um, uh, everybody needed help. So, yeah, right. so I helped. They also asked me when I finished my graduate degree at Michigan State to, um, to teach at the university. Yeah. So I'm on 29 years. Public relations was one yeah. class. And, uh, and now I teach to about 300 students oh, each term. That's awesome. So it really is a, it's a great profession, good investment. I've enjoyed it. It gives me the, vol the time to volunteer and do what I really think is important. And the areas that I think we really are concerned about is good communication. Right. Sometimes so many good things are going on and we don't have a communication strategy for it. So at my company, we, uh, we help a lot of municipalities, uh, school district, airport, um, and then our own chamber of commerce in Lansing and mm -hmm. others statewide. Um, Consumers Energy is a wonderful client. So, so uh, that's what cold communication really does. And we, the, the greatest thing is I love being here with so many policy leaders at Mackinac Island, and they are really visionary. And every time I turn around, I see somebody I know, and they ask me to do something. <laughs> right, yeah, of course. Because yeah. they know I'll say yes, Yes, Larry. right, yeah, yeah, you're a sucker for that, <laughs> which right. makes you a leader. <laughs> well, thank you. And uh, my guess is you're a fabulous professor because you have energy and you're positive, and that's what students need. Well, and Michigan State University has great students, and the advertising profession has really, advertising public relations has really exploded. Yeah. And so, so we've got to put them on a right the Right path, and with path. your leadership, with your mentoring, <laughs> I'm sure that you've helped a lot of these uh, youngsters and not so young people start their careers. It is so satisfying to be in touch with kids 
who took your class. I had one student who took my class, and she was actually pregnant, and she had a, had her baby, and her student, her her baby, became a student, came really? to class. So he sat through the class twice. <laughs> okay, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> That's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robert Cole, thank you very much for being on the show, and and even more importantly for your volunteering as chair of the Michigan Community Service Commission. Keep up the good work, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Well, Larry, it's great to talk with you. Thank you. That was Robert Colt of the Michigan Community Service Commission. Coming up next, we'll hear from Diane Banks when Caring for Kids continues here on the Great Voice of the Great Lakes. News Talk 760 WJR. Welcome back to Caring for Kids on WJR. Presented by the Children's Foundation. Once again, here's Larry Burns. All right, welcome back, everybody. Larry Burns here, Caring for Kids on Mackinac Island for the 2021 Policy Conference. And with me now is Diane Banks. Diane is the Executive Director of Advancing Macomb a role that she has held since 2019. Uh, in her role, Diane has led Advancing Macomb through a strategic revisioning process to prioritize collaboration and convening resources for nonprofits and underserved communities in Macomb County. Diane has her Master's of Public Administration from Central Michigan University, and I also know that her undergraduate degree is from CMU as well, so that makes us both trips Fire up chips. Fire up, exactly. Uh, and 10 years of experience as a public and nonprofit administrator. So, Diane, welcome to Caring for Kids. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you again. You too. There's a lot of people from Macomb County here at the conference. Representing. Exactly, as it should be. And so, let's start off by talking a little bit about, um, you know, Macomb County is a very diverse community. It's a large county uh, and your organization as I just mentioned has gone through sort of a strategic planning process and some tell our listeners some of the most current initiatives and, and things that you're working on right now sure I'm happy to so advancing Macomb is Macomb County's conduit for collaborative community solutions so what does that mean uh, it means that our initiatives focus on addressing challenges in our communities um, by providing the philanthropic model and leadership to, one, cement partnerships between nonprofit, public, and private sectors, uh, two, identify and attract resources and funds for projects and programs, and three, bring increased visibility to Macomb County. So we've used this strategy for many community initiatives over the last couple of years, um, and in particular in Mount Clemens, our, right. our county seat. Uh, so we've formed a coalition of nonprofit grassroots leaders along with um, local government leaders and businesses to identify projects that really can have um, high impact uh, quality of life improvements in, in the city. So um, we've worked on projects from placemaking, uh, public art murals in the downtown area where families can interact um, with those, those murals and, and be downtown in that environment. Um, we've also helped bring um, increased access to youth sports um, through a regional uh, coalition um, through Sportport. Um, to provide equipment to, to youth and increase access to, to youth sports. Uh, we fundraised for a new play fountain, which we're actually about to break ground on um, at an underutilized park in Mount Clemens. Okay, good. Um, so that's exciting, and that should be open um, next year. So again, trying to help the city identify those projects, but then get, attract those resources and convene the right people together to, to make it happen. Um, so that's been really exciting in the city. Absolutely. It sounds like you're doing great work. And so, what are some of the other long-term, you know, you're relatively new in your position, mm -hmm. uh, and what are some of your longer-term goals and initiatives, maybe three, four, five years down the line? 
Sure, yeah. I'm, I'm proud of the work we've done, but we're really just getting started. Yep. We have a great group together. Um, we have the business leaders that are dedicated to our mission and want to give back to Macomb County. They all have an interest in some way. So we have a lot of potential, and now we, we're continuing to build those relationships in the community, really identify where the greatest needs are so that we can focus our strategy there. Um, and collect data, that's such an important part of storytelling and, and helping um, grassroots organizations, nonprofits, um, to get that data collection. So we're working in that way. Continue to be a backbone for collaboration. We all talk about collaboration, we want to do right. it. Exactly. But it's not always easy work. You have no. to have somebody that can kind of help bring. Well, some organizations, if not many, aren't used to collaborating. Right. And and so it's it's a concept they want to embrace but they don't know how to do it absolutely so they need someone like you to help them along and so and we're talking with diane banks who is the executive director of advancing macomb that's macomb county if you will uh and so the children's foundation over the last five years has begun to become more involved in macomb county when i started we really weren't uh, too involved. It was mostly Wayne County. Mm -hmm. So we're, we now have several partners that you and I chatted about when we first met. Uh, and then I met you through Paul Tr Trulick, right. who's on our board of First Tee of Greater Detroit, which is also Macomb County. Uh, and so there's a lot of things that the Children's Foundation wants to do strategically to help the families and youngsters, young adults in Macomb County. And so uh, we'll need your help to lead us into the right direction, to the right places and things of that nature. And so you mentioned Mount Clemens, you know, and, and most of us growing up in the Detroit area, particularly East Side, is, is familiar with Mount Clemens. But what are some of the other communities in Macomb County that you're involved in or, or want to be involved in? Sure, yeah, there's such um, a difference um, when you look throughout the county between communities. Um, and some communities uh, have these kind of co collaborations already in place and working on um, attracting philanthropic funds. So we're really focused on those communities like Mount Clemens, um, Roseville, uh, East Point, um, who have goals for improving quality of life, but they just don't have access to the, to the resources, to the donors. Um, to philanthropic funds. Um, so those are the communities that we've been focusing on the most, um, Clinton Township as well. Uh, but we have relationships throughout the county, so we, as projects come up and we encourage them to think about um, advancing Macomb as a partner, um, especially on these types of placemaking, projects, quality of life, and connecting with nonprofit organizations. That's the big one. Um, we're really focused on bringing nonprofits throughout the county together yeah. to collaborate. So. And I, I have to believe that healthcare has really exploded in Macomb County just because I'm familiar with all of the, the systems that have either recently built or purchased or something. And, and so that, that's a good thing because it, it will continue to draw people to live in the community. Um, I'm familiar with the relatively new Austin Catholic that's in Macomb County that uh, is a Somewhat similar to the school I went to in Detroit that at the time was called Austin Catholic Prep. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, uh, their student body's growing. Uh, and so the nonprofit community will be extremely important uh, to continue to grow. And, and, and I would have to think, you mentioned Roseville and some other communities adjacent to Wayne County, mm -hmm. that that's probably both a plus and a minus. Um, because, you know, they don't maybe have the identity in Macomb County as, as, as maybe we would like them to. Right. Uh, and so through your initiatives and efforts, I think that that can, can get better over time. Absolutely. Yeah. And so if somebody is listening and they live in Macomb County and um, they, they care about helping their community, what, what are some of the ways they might get involved? Sure, yeah. I, I would encourage any nonprofits especially, but individuals who want to give back or business leaders who have an interest in Macomb County to reach out to us directly. Um, you can call our office line at 586-651-0055 or email diane at advancingmacomb.com. Um, 
And I encourage you to check out our website, uh, vancymacomb.com, and um, sign up for our newsletter, uh, follow us on social media, and um, reach out, and we're happy to find ways to help you get involved with um, any of these projects or initiatives or nonprofit organizations that we help. Great. And so are there, is there a way for the nonprofits to work together as a mechanism yet to do that that, that you can mention? Yes, thank you. That's uh, thank you for bringing that up. We started a Macomb nonprofit virtual roundtable last year when COVID hit to give nonprofit leaders an opportunity to come together, talk about their challenges, find ways that they might be able to partner, collaborate. Sometimes we bring in speakers um, to bring resources. Speakers, in. I'm going to be a speaker. Yes, you yes, are. So Very soon. I'm looking forward to that. We're looking forward to having you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, the more we can connect nonprofits with each other and with other leaders um, in the region, you know, the better off we'll, we'll be in the long run. Awesome. So I mentioned earlier that we're trying, we, the Children's Foundation, are trying to have a bigger footprint in Macomb County. Just some of our partners I wanted to mention. Uh, the Chaldean Community Foundation, led by Martin Manna. Uh, we're doing some great work with them. He's such a yep. nice gentleman. No resolve that... Uh, deals with uh, high school students that uh, that might be on a uh, sort of a track that uh, is depression and some other things and so that's great and then inclusively fit one of my favorite new partners uh, working with um, youngsters and young adults that have physical challenges and giving them the opportunity to um, work out and to exercise and it's it's just a great organization, and they're a new partner. That's just three of our nonprofit partnerships in Macomb County. Uh, so if there's people out there that are listening, and you're involved with one in Macomb that that helps kids, helps youngsters, uh, mental health is big for us now. Um, you know, just let me know, and uh, and then maybe Diane and I can work together on, on doing some great things. And so uh, our partnership will just continue to grow. So, Diane Banks, what else do you want the uh, listeners to know about your organization or Macomb County? Our organization's uh, continuing to grow. Reach the more partners, the better. Um, and that's not just in Macomb County. That's the great thing about being here at the Mackinac Policy Conference. Is it's great for anyone who wants to collaborate uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm I'm meeting with nonprofits and other leaders in Macomb County, but um, it's really important that we align with what other partners are doing in the region and the state so that we can advance not only Macomb County, but the state of Michigan as well. Yeah, and what, what's your general sense at this year's policy conference on, on people, just their sort of frame of mind? Yeah, obviously COVID still number one, and um, we're all kind of navigating that together, what, and all hopeful that what comes out of it is positive for our communities. I, we see a lot more interest in collaboration now um, since COVID hit, so I hope that continues and, and we'll continue to play a, an important role in that. Um, but also having these important discussions around equity and, um, you know, really focusing on the communities with the greatest needs um, throughout the region and, and the state. Yeah, and one of the things that's really become more uh, common language is social determinants of health, things that impact our lives every day. Mm -hmm. And COVID is just made it more um, understandable about that because we've all pivoted uh, in many ways. And as we get out of this, uh, as you mentioned, I think we'll be stronger and better for it. Absolutely. So, uh, I know Macomb County will be stronger because of your efforts. Thank you. So that was Diane Banks of Advancing Macomb. Coming up next, I'll provide an update on some exciting foundation news right here on The Great Voice of the Great Lakes. News Talk 760 WJR. Welcome back, everyone. That was a great show, as I mentioned earlier, recorded on Mackinac Island at the Mackinac Policy Conference. It was great to get back in person. And coming up next with the foundation, we have a lot of great activities. A reminder to tune in to Bally Sports Detroit on Monday, November 22nd. That's Monday, November 22nd, to watch the third annual Jamie Daniels Foundation Roast. This year's roastee is the famed Brett Hull, 
and features a great lineup of roasters. You don't want to miss it. It's very funny for a great cause. For additional information, head on over to our website for details. Our grants team is hard at work reviewing round one of the 2022 grant applications, and I can't wait to share some of our new partners as well as renewing some of our current partners. Right now, we have 130 grantee partners. So coming into next year, we're going to have even more. So stay tuned for that. And most of all, thanks for joining us tonight on Caring for Kids. I hope you have a great month. See you next time. Onward. Caring for Kids with Larry Burns on WJR has been presented by the Children's Foundation.